And Jesus said, I've given them the glory you gave me, so they may be one as we are one. I'm in them and you are in me. May they experience such perfect unity that the world will know that you sent me, but this is a bit that blows me away, James, and that you love them as much as you love me. Why does that get you? The Father's love for the Son, there is no greater love than the love that exists between the Father and the Son. But to think that broken men and women like us, that God looks at us and that same love he has for his Son, that's how he feels about us. Does that say something to you, Dudley? <laughs> yes, it does. Because there's, there's nothing that transforms us like being loved. Uh, we live in a religious world that's always trying to tell us to be better, to do things to get God to favor us. And we carry our own little internal scorecard, hoping we'll get better. Maybe God will love me a little more and give me a little bit more blessing. But uh, the only thing that's going to transform us is to know that we are loved. And God has so loved his son, eternally loved his son, because the son is part of the, part of the Godhead. And yet the thing that's unbelievable, the thing that I struggle with every day is, can I actually believe that God loves me as much as he loves the son? Mm. I, I, I find myself going, no, but maybe I can get good enough that he might love me a little bit. But he, he loves me like the father, as much as the father loves the son. And when God talks to us, James, when God speaks to us, when we hear the voice of God, it will be the echo of what the father said to the son. You are my son in whom I'm well pleased. Mm -hmm. It always has that flavor to it. It will always sound like that. And if you think you're hearing the voice of God and it doesn't have that sound to it, you're not hearing the voice mm -hmm. of the father. Mm 